Good morning, it's Kevin DeWalt of ProLego. One of the challenges of generative AI and large language models is that the technology is changing so fast and the research is coming at such a pace that it's almost impossible for all of us to absorb what's happening and form opinions. And so when people in the media or even experts in AI talk about the challenges of large language models, you'll hear things like, well, you know, they hallucinate or they make things up, therefore, you know, you know it's, they're not that useful or they have problems. Uh, and as I demonstrated a couple of weeks ago with the YouTube video called Smart GPT, we already have potential solutions on the table for overcoming a lot of those challenges. So the Smart GPT video demonstrated how you can connect a bunch of different language models in series to answer a question and come up with much better results than you can by having a single large language model provided the results. And the presenter showed how it can fix a lot of the problems and mistakes that GPT-4 makes. Well, a paper just came out called Tree of Thoughts, Deliberate Problem Solving with Large Language Models. Uh, it was published by Princeton and Google DeepMind, and it has a more rigorous approach to designing the, the same type of uh, system using large language models. In the paper, they describe an approach for taking LLMs and organizing them into a, a tree uh, that is looks a lot like a binary search tree if you've done any kind of programming. If you haven't done any programming, let me give you a quick analogy. Imagine that you're sitting at the bottom of a gigantic tree and you want to find the best leaf in the tree, but you can't see the leaves. So you would start going up the tree and going down trunks and coming back and restarting and kind of you know slowly working your way through until you find the best available leaf. Well, that's a lot like what this paper is proposing doing. Organizing large language models so they come up with answers, uh, multiple answers, and then you explore which one's the best and kind of go back until you find the, the, the best answer for your particular problem. Um, so uh, what's really exciting about this is it, it's another example of how we can overcome some of the, the most common constraints of the GPT-4 models, particularly hallucinations or the suboptimal answers. And uh, the paper demonstrates uh, how this is possible. They use a couple of uh, challenging examples for large language models, like developing crossword puzzles uh, or creative writing tasks. And they demonstrate, based on their testing, how uh, a tree of thought is better. But most importantly, what they do is they provide a, a I guess, a, uh, a roadmap for solving some of the most common problems. For example, you can imagine this type of LLM system design and like customizing and fine tuning a specific, a specific large language model that is like the, the hallucination checker, right? And using that LLM as the one that looks at outputs and decides whether or not the language model has hallucinated. And of course, it could be connected to tools and do web searching and everything else. So, um, like I said, a lot of these a lot of these so-called challenges for LLMs are quickly able to be <coughs> solved. So, um, um, what does this mean for you? It means that things are going to keep coming at such a fast pace, and you have to preserve your optionality. So, if you are working on any kind of strategy involving large language models, consider that the assumptions about what they can do or what they can't do are all going to rapidly change. Um, so, the only way I know to keep track of that is to pay attention to the research, to analyze what's happening, and to talk with my colleagues in the industry who are working on these type of problems. And as always, I will try to do my best to stay abreast of the changes and provide you with the most relevant information so you can make decisions about how to deploy LLMs in your enterprise. Have a great day.